Hey, also, can you guess how many 1911s here on the bench are real? Well, if you guessed two, you'd be right. <laughs> At the Browning 1911-22. But before I get into that, I want to say if you like this content, shares, comments, likes, all that, really appreciate it. Helps out the channel, helps me fight the algorithm, doesn't cost anything. Now, if you do want to spend some money down below, there's some coupon codes of the companies that help me out. So if you're interested in that, look down below, see if there's anything you like. Anyway, into the video. So, Browning 1911-22. 85% scale 1911 A1 at the end of the day. That's basically what it is. Here I have full size government 1911 A1. They stamped it A1 on there to make it easier. And here I have the Browning. And as you can see, don't know how well it shows up, but it's smaller. It's smaller in every way. It's a neat little um, basically scaled down version, right? Difference is this is 22, this is 45, which right now with the cost of ammunition, this is the gun that gets shot much more. Uh, brief overview of it, right? So, all the features, this has pretty much all the features as a standard 1911. Safety, exact same as on the full size. Very nice safety on this gun. Very loud, audible click. I really like that because I'm not a huge fan of external safeties, except for on 1911. So, it's really nice that they have this, right? They also have the grip safety, which is nice. Again, going into, you know, this is basically a miniature scaled down 1911 because it's the a1 it has the hump right there uh, you can take that out looks like so you can probably replace it the um, grips are also replaceable um, you cannot fit normal 1911 grips on this but you can uh, get different grips their browning makes this and the uh, their little 380 1911 take the same style grip so uh, there is a bunch of grip options out there if you're interested but anyway, the slide release, again, standard 1911. It's a little bit smaller, right? It's a little bit smaller than the um, full-size 1911, but I've not really noticed a problem with it. Um, it's still kind of right there where your thumb is. And I have kind of big hands, so we've, you know, I would worry about it overshooting, my thumb overshooting being somewhere over here. No, very natural to find the thumb, the uh, slide release right there. Magazine, 10 round magazine. The, uh, they have these little sliders here on each side to make loading easier. Unfortunately, like every other 22 magazine I've ever fired, after you shoot it long enough, you will get sore thumbs. And, you know, I'm not holding that against the gun. Every 22 pistol I've ever shot gives you sore thumbs after an hour of shooting it. So keep that in mind that it's, they have not reinvented the wheel but it is a nice little magazine. Sights on this. Sights on this are basically what you would expect if you got a standard, like a GI style 1911. This rear notch is windage adjustable, but it is very shallow. The front post up here, right, is something that I'd probably recommend painting and I'm probably gonna do because it is kind of, it can be kind of, if it's real dark, it can be kind of hard to find, but once you get used to shooting it, and again, I'm probably gonna front uh, paint that front sight there to make it easier to pick up. The gun itself is actually pretty accurate. Now here I have a target from me shooting, this is actually today, and I was shooting at about 10 yards, just having fun, just plinking away, blasting away. Not really trying to be super accurate, just trying to see with like some rapid fire, you know, how good a group I could keep. And I say I kept a fairly decent group, you know, a few random flyers over here, but the vast majority of it, well, as you can see, a large portion of the person's uh, the silhouette's head is, well, gone. So I'd say that's pretty good for plinking around. And this gun really is kind of set up for plinking. It's, you know, I wouldn't say it's a small game hunting gun. I wouldn't say it's a self-defense gun or home defense gun or anything like that. This is basically, and I, I hesitate to use the word toy because everybody gets weird, but at the end of the day, this is a range toy. This is something you're going to take to the range. You're going to have fun with it. Um, you know, and, and it, I think it excels at that. Reliability of this gun has been really good. I have had a few light primer strikes. 22s are, again, notoriously unreliable due to ammo, due to every other thing. Rim the cartridge, take your pick. Uh, had a few light primer strikes. I'm pretty sure that's actually the ammo because uh, I had them only today and I've shot this gun a couple different times and this was the first day that I started having that issue. Um, in the very beginning, it did jam a couple times, 
I sprayed some oil on it, broke it in a little bit with some, uh, some more mags, have not had that issue. So honestly, this has been a very reliable gun uh, when you're considering it's a 22. So definitely, you know, definitely you can tell that the build quality in there is good. Browning knew what they were doing when they designed this because it's very reliable. Um, the only thing, the, I have two major issues with this gun. And I say major and they're not that major. They're just, you know, it's compared to everything else about the gun. This is, I guess, my like, you know, cons. Um, so one of the cons is, right, now this gun, if you see here, the hammer, right, kind of goes back past the beaver tail. And what happens for me is I have a very large hand, as you can see. I mean, I can basically stick this in my hand. It's a, you know, um, I have big hands, right? Because I have big hands and I like to hold guns fairly high up. You know, that's how I was taught to shoot. That's how I shoot. I like to get a good high purchase on a, a handgun when I shoot it. And because of that, well, I get a lot of hammer bite. Now I've adjusted my grip a little bit and I hold it a little bit lower and I'm able to minimize it. But if you have big hands with this particular version, you might run into some issues. They do make different versions that have different style hammers and they have like a full style beaver tail, not the uh, GI style. So that can eliminate that issue. But if you're looking at this particular version, keep in mind if you have large hands, you might get some hammer bite. Not the end of the world, but something to keep in mind because it can really make uh, a fun shooting day a little less fun. Right, now the other issue I've had, and this is something that I'm actually going to contact Browning and I'm sure they're just going to send me a new pin, is I've noticed this pin here keeps popping out. Now I haven't had a time, I have to go online and figure out exactly what this pin does. Um, it kept like working its way out to the point where at one point it was about a, a quarter inch out. Um, I was able to easily push it back in, no issue, but does kind of irritate me that, you know, that's working its way out. Um, again, it doesn't seem to be any major part because it, the gun kept functioning even when it was pushed out a little bit. So minor little thing, just something that uh, kind of shocked me that uh, it was working its way out like that. Um, again, it only started happening recently. The first two outings with this gun, and I probably had it out like three or four times, it did not do that. So again, probably just a minor thing, maybe a I need to get a new pin or anything. I'm going to contact Browning on that. Uh, but other than that, I really have not had any issues with this gun. It's been reliable. It's a fun little plinker. Uh, you know, that's honestly, that's what it is at the end of the day. It's a good little plinking gun. It's something to take to the range and have fun with. And, you know, maybe if you have a backyard range or something, that would definitely be a fun gun. Uh, you know, Browning has definitely embraced it being a fun, a fun little plinker because they actually made a, they don't make it anymore, but they made a, basically a, a copy, scaled down copy of the GI style holster that you used to see, you know, can still get reproductions of for, well, full size 1911s. Um, they made that, you know, and that was kind of neat. Unfortunately, I've been trying to track one down and it seems like they're out of production. So Browning, if you're listening, um, it'd be nice if you produce them again, because I'd like to have one for my uh, miniature 1911. Is this something for you? Not, maybe it is. But, uh, but down below what you think, ask any questions, and have a good day.